we're at the end of April here, and this is the tail end of the rainbow trout spawn. In the heart of downtown Casper, Wyoming, there's a fly shop. A shop that is the hub of all fishing in central Wyoming. Anglers from all over the world travel to this western town to experience its rich history, incredible people, and of course, the fishing. You always have to be working that indicator to keep your line tight to the bubble. When that fish pulls that bobber down, you've got a direct line to set the hook. The Ugly Bug Fly Shop has been helping anglers in the area since 1983. Their knowledgeable staff are warm, welcoming, and extremely helpful to assist anglers on all levels of angling for all species in the area. Just outside of Casper, literally on the banks of the North Platte River sits both the Crazy Rainbow River Lodge and the Crazy Rainbow Cabin. This is also the meeting place each and every morning for angling adventures to begin on the waters in and around Casper. It's a busy place, always buzzing with guides and anglers looking forward to their day on the water with big fish dreams to look forward to. For those of you that know me, know that I absolutely love the Western United States. Whether it be the people, the landscapes, or the fishing, there really is something for everybody here. Well, we're back in Wyoming, fishing out of the Ugly Bug and Crazy Rainbow Lodge. We're in Casper, Wyoming, hunting giants, big browns and big rainbows. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. Nice. Oh my goodness, that's the kind of fish that makes stickers out of it. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing. Visit Casper. Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. The North Platte River is a tributary of the Platte River proper and it winds its way through the plains of central Wyoming. Considered central Wyoming's crown jewel, the North Platte is designated as a blue ribbon stream boasting 3,000 fish on average per mile. Species include rainbow, cutthroat, hybrid, and brown trout. Drop the midge and throw a little blue wing on the back here. On this adventure, we are fishing with Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing and Ugly Bug Fly Shop co-owner, Blake Jackson. Blake is all in when it comes to the sport of fly fishing and as a fly shop owner, fly tire, adventure traveler, and of course, full-time fishing guide. Blake has the waters around Casper, Wyoming dialed in 365 days a year. Fish it from up, up top and let drift. No, I think if we come down here and pitch up to the shelf, uh -huh. and kind of that light green seam, yeah. that's where they should be. This is going to be an incredible adventure.
Eight for Rock. We launch and start with flies under a bubble to start the day. Blake, we're back in Casper, Wyoming. There's nothing better, really. I absolutely love it here. But uh, the temperature's the same as previous trips, but this is a different time of year. Yeah, I think uh, here in the spring, kind of your first time here in the spring. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited to have you guys. Yeah, it's the end of April. Uh, what's the game plan? What are we looking for today? Well, we, we should get a little bit of everything. We've probably got midges coming off right now. Yeah. Uh, Going to move into blue wings this afternoon. Nice. Hopefully we'll... Maybe we'll see a few fish with their heads up. We'll get a little dry fly fishing as well, but starting out nymphing. Okay, well, let's get out there. Yeah. Have some fun. I don't probably need to go over all the boat safety rules with you. <laughs> Stay in the boat. Don't fall out of the don't boat. Don't fall out of the boat. <laughs> don't walk out of the boat. <laughs> Just stay in the boat. <laughs> Listen to you, everything you say. Yeah. Don't do what you don't say. Right. I would guess there's a fish right here to your right, Mark. Huh, cruising. This next, uh, yeah, you can just reel it up. They've got, uh, this next mile is all closed for spawning habitat. So, I'll get down below the cables. on. Very nice. So we started our day about 10 minutes ago. It's late April. Gone through a sanctuary. Oh, that's a good fish. Like that's a good one. Gone through a sanctuary spot where there are a bunch of reds and we're now fishing in the deeper water where there isn't any. Um, I've got a three fly rig on, two chronomids and a, um, and a black midge. And in those deeper water, First drift through. Gotta love springtime fishing. Yeah, pretty unique. They're pretty feisty. Not many of them going airborne, but they're fighting good. It's cold Lord. water, right? Yeah, cold. Eat the midge. Eat the midge. Good looking little. Yeah, we have bow. seen some midges going off this morning. Yeah. Nice fish. Good way to start the day. Yeah. Yeah. Good shape. Thanks, buddy. Good job, man. First one down, many more to go. Let's go. Now, once I fish the outside of this seam, do you want me to go back up on the inside? Yeah, I'll probably just row the boat back up. Okay. Right, and we'll, we'll get a nice long drift first pass through and then kind of repeat the same thing. Whoa, that looked fishy. I always think of it like... That is fishy. Nice. Like mowing a yard, right? Uh -huh. You make a pass. Yeah. Then instead of coming, you know, back up and rowing over it, you back up outside of it and then come back on the... Keep moving over. Now, what I like about fishing this time, woo, hello. As I was saying, what I like about fishing this time of year, there's no grass. No grass. It's clean. River's clean. We got a little, little tannic to the water because we had a, a nice little rainstorm yesterday, but not, not that big of a deal. And obviously the fish don't seem to care much. No, so they're far. hungry. When you picked us up from the airport yesterday, I asked you how fishing was. You said fishing's been pretty darn good. Yeah, it's been solid. We're a little behind normal as far as, uh, you know, hatches and that sort of thing, because we've had a, a relatively serious winter here in central Wyoming, but, um, 
but it's really come into shape here the last couple of weeks. Nice. Good fish. I'll tuck her out here at some point. Get his head up. We're on 4X to the first two and then 5X to the bottom bug. So. Okay. Down trying to rub his nose off. Yeah, he is. Nice long leader, too. Doesn't make it all that easy. Yeah, fishing a 12-foot leader. <laughs> Not quite that. <laughs> when you're my size, it gets easier to fish those 12-foot leaders. Well, you also have six-foot arms. <laughs> yeah. Man, they're dogging. Yeah, they are. There he is. Come on up, buddy. Nice job. Pretty fish. Yeah, cool. Cool colors. Spunky. Nice. Uh, is, that, is that from the cold water? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the cold, oops, sorry, I still got you in my net. Yeah, cold water definitely helps, you know, they, they uh, cut a lot of fight in them and they recover quickly. And well done. That fish was suspended. Yeah. With a little bit of color in the water, I probably don't need to be down to 5X, but lately it's been so clean, that's kind of been my my program, so kind of the way I rigged you up this morning. Well, lighter tip, it's not gonna hurt. Nope, not gonna hurt. So will these fish that are eating emergers eventually switch over to eating adults, do you think, if they, sh if they show up, I guess? Yeah, if there's enough of a congregation of them, right, if they can get a a seam that provides enough of them, they sure will. Because there's a pile of fish in here. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Just when you're getting ready to mend it, yep. pick it up. And one of the things I've learned on these spring fish is any movement on the indicator, hit them. Yep, if it ticks. Just like that. Yep. Charging the boat. Woo! Coming right <laughs> at you. So it's interesting, Blake, that you don't necessarily need to be in fast moving water, feature water at all. We've got a slight little seam coming down the middle of this run, not even a run, and uh, suspended fish right in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, it, water temps are cold enough that there's a fair number of fish that, you know, they're not really needing to seek the oxygen. So right. there's, their metabolism's a little slower, and yeah, they're able to hang out in these slow slicks, and with a you know, hardy little midge hatch. There's enough food moving around nice and slow. They can, they can uh, eat out, eat eat whatever they're they're wanting to as it comes down to them. Right. It's a very different fishery in the spring than it is in the fall. This is fun. Yeah, and often in the fall, you know, we're we're looking for the current seam. We're fishing the current pretty aggressively, right? Especially in the early fall. You know, here in the Rockies, often we've got you know, some warm days, midday, right? With water temps this cold, and they're, they're able to sit in a lot of this slower water. Yeah. Oh, it's a very makes different some, fishery. Makes for some pretty subtle strikes at times Absolutely. too, right? As you, usually, to me, there's always kind of a correspondence between slow, slow, easy water, usually a softer take, versus the fast water, harder takes. We had to run a little longer down that big trough, but you're sitting right in the middle of that thing. 
nice. They are, they are pretty. Yeah, colored up, chromed up. Ain't the good old rockworm. Little chronomid. Annelid. Thanks, buddy. saying should be in this trough, yeah. huh? Yeah. Nice. We've been seeing some blue wings come off. I actually saw a fish eat one. Yeah. And, uh, but we're sticking with the nymph rig until we see some more. Nice fish. Eighth rock worm again. Yep. Chunky little guys, huh? Yeah. That one is. Healthy little dude. Man, those colors are just fantastic. Isn't that pretty? Got it wrapped around his fan as well. Nice. It is pretty. Cool cheek colors on that one. Yeah. Well, you knew they were there. We get the weird one here when we're nymph fishing leech patterns, often when you mend it aggressively, right? And kind of twitch the leech, that's when they'll strike. And so we'll, we'll purposely kind of mend with a tight line, almost like a really lazy streamer retrieve, right? Mend it, drag it, mend it, drag it, and looks like a leech is swimming. Switch out this, drop the midge and throw a little blue wing on the back here. Bear with me just a sec. That's a fish. Indeed it is. Can't miss that take, hey? <laughs> Not at all. I like it when they eat like that. Whoa. That's crazy. So it's just after lunch. Clouds have moved in. And uh, we're starting our afternoon drift. Blake made a change and put a, a midge nymph as our point fly. Yeah. And uh, Looks like we got, we're in a good one. I think so, he's got a lot of energy. He does, he took off. And that was in that sort of shallow riffle, hey, just as it kind of dropped off. Right off the shelf, yeah. yeah. Kind of adds up, if they're looking for blue wings, it'd be sitting right on the drop. Nice conveyor belt of food. Yeah, exactly. Pretty easy living. Looks like he took the bottom fly too, hey? Look at it, ate the RS too. 
Oh, that's a good one. Nice. Good job, boy. Nice fish. Thick, eh? Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Best Pretty. one of the day so far. Yeah. Little cut bow. Got the cutthroat slits on the underneath side. Nice. All right, let's do that again. Afternoon's shaping up pretty nice. Yeah. You know your stuff, Blake, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't know about that. Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line, it's better be lucky than good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another thick fish. Yeah. Now it seems like these fish are just holding in any sort of difference in trough depth. Exactly. Right? Yep. Yeah, and you know, you kind of get in that bluish green hue into those troughs. And yeah, they're just laid up, hanging in them. With the river down like this, there's really not a, and there's there's holding water, right? But, but it limits the amount of holding water. Right. So they're definitely, a little bit of depth provides some Yeah, protection. so the structure is the depth. Correct, right? yep. And often these big straightaways can be just super deceiving. You don't think that the, they got a kind of ton of character, but as that sand rolls yeah, and yeah. divots and deposits it. I think we're about there. Yeah. Nice. Awesome stuff. What a day. What an absolutely fantastic day. It's been a good one. That's a fat football sort of fish there. Nice. Quick release. There we go. What a first day on the North Platte. Just incredible. Not too bad for day one, huh? Not bad at all. Man, those fish were day. big. Those fish were big. Fish were healthy, yeah. spunky. Yeah, it was fun. What, uh, what's the plan for tomorrow? I don't quite know yet. I'll check out the forecast and we'll come up with a game plan, but um, either back here somewhere on the reef or maybe up to Thermopolis on on uh, the Bighorn. Well, that's the cool thing about fishing out of Casper, fishing with Blake, is that you've got opportunities to fish all over the place. There's ample opportunities. So depending on the weather, we'll maybe yeah. even choose after breakfast. Right, make a call. All right, let's go have an adult beverage and uh, call it a day. Sounds good. When fishing in Wyoming waters, as anglers, you must be cognizant of the local laws as it pertains to private landowners and public land. When floating the North Platte, if you're not on public land or Bureau of Land Management land, you aren't allowed to walk and wade or even drop an anchor. Private landowners do own the bottom of the river in the state. Ugly Bug and Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing own vast stretches of land along the North Platte, used for agricultural farming as well as for raising cattle. Therefore, when being guided out of the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing, you have the benefit of having access to walk and wade opportunities, lunch shacks, restrooms, and guides are permitted to drop anchor when wanted. Yeah, we, we've got a really robust uh, guide staff and we take great pride in that as well. A lot of long-term guides with us. Um, these are these guys' full-time career um, and it is their profession. So. You know, to me with that, there's a little different level of, of professional aspect wanting you to come back and, and we work hard and, and very proud of, of uh, our guide staff and the way they operate. And we can accommodate, you know, large corporate trips all the way down to, you know, single day trips or half days trying to, trying to get out on the water. 
we're blessed to be on one of the best fisheries in the lower 48 and then take great pride you know in our retail store what we have to offer you know both in the brick and mortar aspect and the online store to me the fishery is really the backbone of it this is a, a fabulous place to come um, unique Wyoming experience and, and some amazing fishing you know, our online store, we take, we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, our entire fly shop's online, including flies, so you can find anything and everything that we have to offer. Um, everything on that website is in stock. This isn't a drop ship sort of thing. It's, it's that we have it and we can ship it out the next day. Multiple ways to get in touch with us. You obviously look us up online, Ugly Bug Fly Shop or CrazyRainbow.net. Uh, you can always give us a ring at the, at the fly shop. Uh, that's 307-234-6905. But anymore with uh, social media stuff, it's, you know, Ugly Bug, Ugly Bug Fly Shop, it'll all find us. We're partners with the Gray Reef Ranch, so we're really the only large private landowner on the Gray Reef stretch, which allows us to do some unique things. Uh, River Left is, is private, and Wyoming access laws are as such that, you know, general public anglers or people that don't have access to that land can't anchor, uh, can't wade fish on that private property. So we're the only ones that really get to do it. And first and foremost, it allows us to, to get ahead of all the other boats using the general public access ramps. So it's a, it's a very big advantage to us and something we try to utilize daily. This is a, a fabulous place to come, um, unique Wyoming experience and, and some amazing fishing. Oh, Blake, another beautiful day in paradise. Yeah. That's gonna change. It is, I think we got a little uh, little wind, a little rain in the forecast. Yeah, so. maybe some snow. Hopefully not, but maybe, <laughs> yeah. Well, what's that gonna do to the fishery today? Well, I mean, it shouldn't be much different. We got midges coming off now. We should see some blue wings. Um, obviously, the wind can play effects on drifts and stuff, but yeah. we'll make the most of it. All right, well, let's do that. Let's make yeah. the most of it. So, Blake, how do you want me to fish this today? Just a you know pretty standard nymph, and so we're running about you know a foot or two longer than than most of the water depth we're fishing. So you know relatively aggressive men's kind of keep you know an S or a squiggly line between you and the bubble, and uh, we'll do our best to get a you know nice even dead drift, and then most importantly uh, set the hook on anything and everything. If it moves or ticks or bounces or goes up river at a high rate of speed. Uh, you know, a nice, even kind of recast sort of lift is really what we're after. Oh my gosh. It felt dead, it was dead <laughs> weight, man. It did look like dead weight. I thought you snagged for I a second, a too. Yeah. Now he doesn't know he's hooked and he's gonna go for a run. Now what I'm doing is I'm making a triangle with my arms so that I can manage that slack so it doesn't get wrapped around the leaning post, break off a big fish. You don't want, do not want that. Wow. Oh, oh. it came off. That was a big fish, Bummer. man. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Let's do that run again. Okay. Fish on. So the water's a little dirtier today. Yeah. And uh, Blake put on a, a, a significantly larger rock worm. Um, just so, 
so that they can see this fish rolled up in it. Yeah. Rolled up the leader, yeah. There we go. There he's back to the mouth. Yep. Perfect. Take you a took little a little midge of all things. I think he'd be eating. Eating the bigger piece, right? Bigger food items with dirtier water, but he ate the little midge. Nice. Good fish. I was about to pick it, pick it up to mend. And a bobber disappeared. <laughs> And one more cast. I'll get to both. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying before, I was so inter inter rudely interrupted before, this triangle that I'm forming with my arms is a great way to clear your slack such that you don't get things tangled up around your feet or around, or around the leaning post so that you can get the fish on the reel. It's a great habit to get into um, and it will help you lose a lot less fish. I think he's staying down. He is staying down. I saw, I saw him sideswipe me. He looked like a decent fish. He's acting like a decent fish. I'm gonna slide the boat left here, Mark. Okay. We'll kind of bring him around the front. And get towards shallow water here instead of fighting him out in the center of the channel. Spin you around. Yep, thanks, boy. Yeah, not too bad. Silverfish. This one's bright. I wonder what he ate. Oh, yeah. He is staying down, though, man. Yeah, he is. Looks like he ate that little blue wing nymph. Split case. Nice. right at me and then turn around and hightail the other way. You're pretty good at that, the old U-turn trick. <laughs> but it is, it's the deep water that's holding these fish. It's all, that's the structure, right? We, yeah. we learned that the other day, that the structure is, is the change of depth. Yeah, and this, you know, kind of diamond chop sort of stuff is really ideal. Now, Blake, it's starting to cloud over. We might get a shot at a brown trout today, hey? I, I hope so. Yeah, it's looking that way. A little cloud cover. This guy's rolled up again, too. Yep. Crazy how they do that when they don't jump, they start rolling. Took the split case too. Yeah. So Blake, we're at the end of April here, um, and this is the tail end of the rainbow trout spawn. Yeah, on a normal year, this would kind of be the end, but it, uh, we've you know had cold enough water temps and kind of a harsh winter, so. They're kind of, you know, in the middle of it uh, a little more than normal. So we would usually be wrapping up. My guess is this year it'll, it'll wrap up more like the 10th or 12th of May for the spawn. And how does that affect how we're fishing? I mean, the big, the big thing was we're really only focusing on the deeper water, trying to avoid all the spawning beds. Um, so, you know, those shallow riffle pockets, especially those with uh, cleaned out gravel, uh, kind of 
you know, the big moon spots sort of thing, right? Uh, craters uh, of clean gravel, we're avoiding those and, and fishing the, the deeper kind of slower pockets versus the oxygenated shallows. Staying away from these spawners. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we, need them, we need them to be successful for, for the ongoing health of the river, right? So, yeah, trying to avoid them and give them their space and, and let them do their thing so that uh, future generations can come enjoy the fishery. Sit deep. Another jumper. It's crazy. You're predicting them. <laughs> well, You're calling the shot. Pretty nice when they get sitting up on a shelf. You kind of have an idea where they should be. So they're just nosed right up waiting for things to tumble over, right? Exactly. Yep. So what's Blake, what Blake's having me do is actually throw my flies on top of the shelf just as it goes off. And with that split shot, as the current pushes them off, the split shot drives those three flies down and they're just waiting for an opportunity to grab. It seems like they're pretty lined up off that shelf. Yeah, <laughs> seems it. You know, I've only fished here in the fall and in the fall it's fantastic, but this is a whole different ball game. Yeah, usually our springtime produces, you know, higher fish numbers. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it's it's primarily a nymph fishery in the spring. We don't get we don't get quite the the same uh, you know dry fly fishing opportunities and quite and quite the same uh, streamer opportunities. Right. Another fantastic day on the North Platte. Tomorrow we're going for a bit of a drive to some new water, the Bighorn River near Thermopolis. Before we get started on the Bighorn, Blake walks us through the setup he likes for higher water. So a uh, rig for the uh, Bighorn River here in Wyoming is somewhat similar to a few of the other rigs we fished this week, but uh, a, a little bit longer due to the water being up. So we're about seven feet from uh, an Oro strike indicator down to, uh, to our split shot. Uh, we messed with split shot quite a bit, or we're gonna mess with split, split shot quite a bit. So. You know, we obviously want enough weight to get it down, but not enough to snag it. And then uh, fly one here, we're throwing a, a hothead uh, sow bug. This one's got a pink bead to it. And then about 18 inches to fly two. The blooming olive's coming off. This is a gray and chocolate uh, foam back McGruber. And then the, the final bug in the system here, this is a, a gray RS2 foam back in a size uh, 18 and 20. Blake? Yep. On this one. Same deal? Yep. Good. See any hatches down here now? Yeah, blueing hatches have been pretty solid. I haven't been up since they bumped the flows. They probably set back the hatches a little bit, right? <laughs> Let's see. 
Oh, Blake, we're not 100 yards from the boat ramp. Didn't take too long. <laughs> no. Good healthy fish with the flows up a little bit over here. It, uh, it's gonna make them fight good and hard. Rainbow to start. Nice. Free work. Good way to start the day, yes, huh? Yes, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I like it. Oh no, he took that hothead. Took the little hothead. So the the top fly, we're pretty sow bug heavy right now. So kind of a sow, sow bug scud cross on the yep. very top. So we're about eight feet with a pretty good chunk of, of a split shot on there to help get it down in these flows. So about eight feet from indicator to weight, and then uh, three sow bugs in a row. Top one's called a yum yum. Um, and then a little hothead in the center, a hothead uh, soft tackle sow bug. And then the bottom one's uh, called Pete's carpet bug by good buddy Pete Chanifel. Nice. We get real shallow for just a sec, Mark. Go. I jump across real quick, Mark. Get out of this guy's road. We'll pitch back to the right once I get the other side. Well, good morning. It's um, it's a beautiful day compared to what was going on yesterday here in, in uh, Wyoming. Um, but we've made a little bit of a trek up to Thermopolis, Wyoming, yep, yep. to fish <laughs> to fish the Bighorn River. Excuse me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Jumper. I need to tighten my drag down a bit. Yeah, more. I may need a little little adjustment. So we decided to come up to the Bighorn, launch at the Wedding of the Waters, and uh, and do a, a float here. Um, this is a fantastic uh, rainbow trout and brown trout fishery. And um, so far it's playing out pretty well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Took the top bug. Yeah. A football shaped fish, been eating well. Thanks, buddy. Well done, Mark. Well, will this will this river fish much differently than the North Platte? Yeah, it does. This actually, this fishery almost it 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 fishes really well in the shoulder seasons. Yeah. And midsummer generally doesn't fish quite as good. If that makes sense. So it 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 has a tendency to get a little more uh, vegetation growth right. in the middle of the summer, and at times can fish pretty well. But often water temps here will run run warmer than they do on uh, on the North Platte. So, you know, that midsummer when water temps rise, um, the fishing can slow down a little bit. Gotcha. Then it picks up nicely again, kind of late fall. Nice. So a little different th from the North Platte in that you actually do have River Oop. features that you can fish here, such yeah. as laydowns and things like that too, yeah. right? Yeah, especially when the water's up, right? When the water's, you know, when the water's down, it, the some of the features kind of disappear, but when the water's up like this and up in the grass, it, it definitely adds to it a little bit.
subtle lead, eh, Blake? Yeah, very subtle. Kind of been the MO with this slow water. Soft, soft water, soft take. Yeah. He fired right up once he set the hook, though. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a good fish. I'm surprised to see them in this slow water. You'd think beyond the seams of the fast current. Yeah, I think, you know, by nature, they're, they try to be as lazy as possible, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just enough current to provide a food source and not have to work hard. Like us eating potato chips on the couch, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> nice rainbow. Yeah, it is. Took the hothead? Took the hothead again. Gotta be fish suspended with as many damn blue wings. There we go. Oh, good fish too. Oh, man. And he gave me a tangle of boots. Son of a gun. You work hard for one and then you <laughs> blow it. Sorry, man. No, you're good. slower day today. Yeah, it has. That's okay. Got to work for them. Got to work for them. Keep you humble. <laughs> and uh, done a bunch of fly changes. There's a bunch of blue wings going off. So we've got that split back blue wing nymph on the bottom. And, and a still ate a sow bug. <laughs> still ate a sow bug. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way it goes sometimes. Nice grab. Interesting how that works. You'd think they'd be all over the blue wing. It's a damn sailboat. Yep. 
looked away for a second, and the bobber was gone. <laughs> always the case well, keep it? keep looking away more often yeah I will. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the tip of the day yeah don't look don't pay attention <laughs> well i just hit a snag and lost everything and blake retied Yeah, about four feet afterwards. And we're into one. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Slip one? Yep. yep. So what happened there was I could feel that the hook pulled from the fish's mouth. And it must have been on either the second hook or the top hook. And then probably the second or the bottom hook got into that fish and then just pulled out. Yep. So, But when that happens, look at your hooks. Make sure they're not bent out because that came out real easy. Yeah, and size size 18 little hooks that has a tendency to bend. We're good. Nice. Looks good. That fish I hooked up there, that last fish, yeah, is a big buck. Oh, I just it? colored up buck. Yeah, it wasn't that big, but it was dark. That's a good up. Right off that rock, hey? Yeah, sitting in that slow pocket right off that corner. Ate the blue ink finally. Ate what it's supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to hold us here so we don't get down into that bridge, Mark. Yeah. The, um, from the second fly down to the point fly is 5X, so gotta mind that a little bit. Keep in mind, you can't horse these fish in as much as you'd like to, especially with this cold water too, because they are feisty. One of the things that makes the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow Lodge uniquely special is Blake's philosophy of giving back to the community. While we were there, Blake and his team were hosting Warriors of Field Legacy Foundation, giving back through life-changing experiences. We've got, we do have a, a unique group in uh, Warriors of Field Legacy Foundation guys are in town. Um, we're, you know, soft spot for our military veterans. Uh, we try to take care of those guys the best we can. So this uh, this group of vets and uh, volunteers um, get some, you know, recently released and wounded veterans um, out on the water for for some fellowship and, and fishing and um, introduce them to the sport if they haven't been introduced. So um, yeah, they're here for a few days, enjoying some great weather and, and good fishing. We split up from the veterans and decided to head back to the reef for a day's float.
this one on the reel. Now the, the water has dropped a bit. Nice, good fish. So though the water's dropped on the North Platte uh, the last couple of days, this fish is staying down, Blake. Um, we're still running, we're still running the structure that is the depth change. And anywhere there's green water, anywhere it's a little bit darker, that's where, that's where we're concentrating. Staying away from the reds and looking to get these big browns and big rainbows. I haven't seen this thing yet. No, he's really staying down there. I like it. There he is. Flash of him there. He likes it under the boat. Yeah, he does. It's good fish. Nice rainbow. It's a good rainbow. Equipment for this North Platte fishing adventure out of the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow Lodge is as follows. We were wielding five and six weight, nine foot fly rods with mid arbor reels. Line was five and six weight, weight forward floating line. Leader was three and four X, 12 foot tapered leaders with three, four and five X tippet. Flies included rockworms, MacGruber nymphs and Pertagon bullet jig flies. go, Mark. We'll fire left. Here's Blake with the setup for the day. So today here on the North Platte, the Gray Reef Stretch, we're fishing the new Sage R8. This is a nine foot five weight version with the new Sage Spectrum uh, LT reel. This reel and, and rod are a great combination, super lightweight, easy to fish all day long with enough backbone to handle uh, Gray Reef and North Platte fish. And then uh, fly line, this is a, uh, an SA uh, Infinity and a five weight as well. Bug wise, we've got a, a pretty simple rig here. The, the fish right now are on, uh, on blue wing olives and, uh, and rockworms really well. We've got rockworms in a couple of different colors, but this, this first one is a size 14 red rockworm. A little caddis larva. The second one is a smaller size 18 purple rockworm. And then the final fly, this is a little purple green machine, does a great job imitating those blueing olives. So we're running this three fly rig underneath a strike indicator with about six, six and a half feet of distance between indicator and weight. 
and a small AB weight as well. Well, that's about all the time we have for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. I want to take this opportunity to thank Blake Jackson and everybody at the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow Lodge for their hospitality and, of course, the fishing. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you right here in Casper, Wyoming, on the North Platte River. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing. Visit Casper. Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited. WeatherTech Canada. <laughs>